So you bought a Ledger Nano S and you quickly realized that it's really not a cakewalk to set up. Not to worry, this video is going to be an extremely beginner friendly, very step-by-step -step tutorial that will walk you through everything you need to know to get this set up the right way. I'll show you how to set it up, how to get addresses set up, how to add and remove funds from the wallet, and I'll show you how to connect it with MetaMask at the end since most of us are using this with MetaMask. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So first off, when you first open the box that hopefully you bought from a reputable source, you'll th see three very important things. The first one is obviously the actual hardware wallet. The next one is you'll see a USB cord. Now, if you're using this with a Mac, you're going to need something else probably to plug it into the Mac, some kind of adapter for USB-C. And then the last thing we see is it's going to come with this piece of paper right here. This is extremely, extremely important. And if you ever lose your wallet, what's written down on this paper is going to be the only way for you to ever access the money that's on that wallet. So you're going to write it down here in a minute, and you're going to store this in an extremely safe place. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do as soon as you get your hardware wallet is just plug it in. This does not come with a battery. It draws electricity from the computer. So we're gonna to need to plug it in to get started in any way. And you'll see as soon as you plug it in, it'll start to boot up. Now you're gonna see right here, you're gonna see two buttons. And those buttons will correlate with what you see on the screen right here. For example, right now we can see it says welcome and then there's a tiny little arrow pointing right that correlates to this top button that we can see right here. So I'll click that top button and now you can see it lets me know that I can go left or right to navigate whatever's on the screen. Now, please note if you ever want to click enter or confirm something that's on the screen, you'll push both buttons at the same time and that's like an okay or an enter button. Otherwise I can go left and right like that. So you can see right here, press both buttons to validate. Now it's gonna tell us to go to ledger.com slash start. And what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to download some software under our computer. Doesn't matter if we have a Windows or a Mac, either one will work. And that software is what is going to interact with the Ledger wallet. So when you go to ledger.com slash start, where it tells you to go, you'll see right here, there's a download option and you can choose a few different ones. I'm gonna choose Mac, you choose whatever you need to. And then you're going to download and install the software that comes along with it. And now you can see right here in my screen, I've got the app application, the Ledger Live app installed, and I can open it up and it will start looking for the Ledger hardware wallet that we have sitting right here plugged into the computer. We'll click get started, we'll accept all the terms of use, and then we need to select which device. Now most of the devices are pretty similar, but you should know which device you have. This tutorial focuses on the Nano S. Now this is important to note right here, you see how it talks about a recovery phrase? That's what we talked about in the beginning if you ever actually lost your Nano S. But I'm going to assume that you're setting up a brand new Ledger Nano S. We'll go there, and then we're gonna work our way through all of the different sales points that it gives you right here. Now you can see right here, it's telling you to turn on the Nano and ours is already on. So we'll click next step right there. Now it's gonna ask us to set up a pin code. Essentially, anytime we wanna validate a transaction, we're gonna enter this code in the Nano and it can be four to eight digits long. So we'll click that right there and we'll click set up pin code. So we're gonna head over to our Nano S here where it has options. You can see it's gonna say set up as new device or we can scroll over and it says restore from recovery phrase. And we can go back here and we're gonna click set up as new device. So we'll click both of those and here's the uh, tutorial. What it just told us to do was to choose a pin. So we'll double click to say, yes, I wanna choose a pin. And you can see right here, we essentially can go up numbers with the right arrow or down numbers with the left arrow. And so we're gonna choose a four to eight digit pin doing that. And I'm just gonna choose all fours. So I'll double, I'll click hard on that. I'll go down one, I'll click on both of them. I'll go up one, I'll click both of them. I'll go up three, I'll click both of them. And our pin is all fours. Now you can see it's got a check mark. And if you don't ever see a check mark, you can go up all the way past 10 and that's where the check mark appears. Now we'll double click again and you can see it says, okay, confirm our pin. So we'll do that as well. And it's going to tell you, now it's going to generate that seed phrase. And this is where it's extremely, extremely important that we write down what it gives us. So I'll click right here a few times until we get to where it's generating the phrase. And you can see it says, press both buttons to continue. Now you can see right here, it's going to give you the first word, that's fantasy. And if we take this card that it gave us right here, you can see we write that down in spot one. We'll go over here to the word, and that word is, I believe, essence. And we'll go through every one of those and write them all down. This is going to take some time. Luckily, we only have to do it once. All right, so you can see right here, we've entered all of the 24 numbers that it's given us on this little sheet. Don't worry, we're gonna reset after this so you can steal these numbers or letters if you would like. So you can see right here, we've written down all of our 24 words and now it's gonna have us actually confirm our, our phrase, okay? And I'm gonna click 
enter, which is both of them at the same time, and it's gonna ask for word one, and it's gonna go through all 24 on the list. So it's gonna give you about five different words to select from each time. So my first word is fantasy. I'm gonna go right, right, and there's the word fantasy. Double click, okay? My next word is essence, and you get the gist. We'll go do this real quick. Now, assuming you did it all right the first time, which I'll be honest, I've messed up plenty of times on this, and I apologize for the shaky screen as well. It'll say your recovery phrase is all set, and we're good to go. We'll click right there, and it will say, be careful with it. We'll continue through all of the reminders that it gives us right here. Just remember, do be careful with it, and then we're good to go. Now it's gonna start processing, and hopefully our computer will recognize that. So I'm gonna click next on the computer right here. I'm gonna let it know that yes, I did my recovery phrase. Okay, I'm gonna go next on the computer. I'm gonna go next again, and I'm gonna click OK, I'm done. Now you can see right here on the actual ledger, it is now letting me know your device is now ready, which is great. But first, I'm gonna have to take this funny little quiz on my computer over here, where it wants to make sure you actually understand what you're getting into. So, as it says right here, uh, my crypto is stored on the blockchain or on the Nano. So I'm gonna click on the blockchain here, and look, it's correct. That just lets you know they're not actually storing coins on here. This is just storing the keys or the, uh, the code that'll give you access to the crypto that's being stored on the blockchain. And real quick, if my recovery phrase is no longer secure or private, then we definitely wanna select the bottom one there. And then it says, if you connect your Nano to the Ledger app, your private key is still offline. So that's good for you to know that everything is secure even when you're connected to your computer using this app. We'll click Finish Quiz and you can see right here, we'll go through a few more, more steps where it's actually gonna verify that your Nano is real, that it's not uh, been tampered with or something to where it'll send your private keys to somebody after you set it up. And then we're gonna have to do one more thing on the actual Ledger. You can see it says, are you okay to give access to Ledger Manager? And we're gonna double click both of those. And now you can see on the screen here, it's loading and we're good to go, we're moving. So we'll click continue on the screen. You can see a lot of bouncing back and forth. Trust me, it's even harder when you're trying to film it. Now, one thing I wanna add, uh, this is, I've already set this up before in the past, and so I don't have this notification, but typically when you get a brand new one and it's a brand new app, you'll see in the top, it's gonna ask you to update the firmware on your ledger. You're gonna wanna go about doing that. So do click that and update before anything else, and so everything is up to date. Now, the next thing we wanna do is adding an account. So you can see right here, I can click add account and I can choose an asset. So the way this works is it's going to have to set up a private key for each asset or each blockchain that it's going to be interacting and setting up addresses with. So we're gonna call those accounts. Now it's important to note, for example, on the Ethereum blockchain, there's hundreds, if not thousands of different coins. Those each don't have to have their own address. They just need to have one Ethereum overarching address for them all. So we'll click Ethereum right here and you can see it's gonna say ETH in parentheses, meaning this is on the ETH blockchain. So we'll click continue and we'll let it go through the, the process of checking. Always, if you ever get stuck, look on your app right here on your actual device and see if anything's happening there. But as you can see on the actual device and on the screen, it is being installed. It's a st installing an Ethereum address and private keys for Ethereum right here. So once you set it up on the actual app on the computer, you'll go here and it's gonna say, we've got the Ethereum app. You wanna open it up? We'll double click and say yes. And you now have inside of your ledger, you have got an Ethereum address set up. So you can see it says application is ready. Now you can see that inside of this app, App. There's a little mini app on my ledger and I can go to the settings and that's the settings for my Ethereum wallet. You'll have to go back to your computer and just work your way through the process and it's gonna say account was added successfully and we'll click done. Okay, now you can do this with anything but it's important to note that the Ledger Nano S, I think it can hold four or five different passcodes in it. It can only hold, so you can only have access to a few different blockchains, meaning I can't hold Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, Terra Luna, and five other ones that are all on different blockchains, there's not enough memory. So you'll need to upgrade to one of their higher memory options from Ledger. And honestly, I'm, I'm not a big fan of that. I'm kind of annoyed that they come with such a tiny amount of memory to start, but that's for another day and another review. So you can see right here on our screen, we now have an account. When we go to accounts on the left here, you can see the Ethereum account we set up. We can click into it yet. And if you want to see your address, we'll click receive right here and click continue. And it's gonna check the device first off, and then it's gonna give you an address. Now this that we're looking at right here is the Ethereum blockchain address for this wallet, this hardware wallet that we set up, okay? So we can copy that and we'll send a little Ethereum there just to prove that it works. Now it's gonna ask you to verify, basically to make sure that your computer wasn't hacked or something went wrong with your app. It's gonna want you to look at the screen and verify that what you're seeing here is exactly what you're seeing on your computer screen. So we'll click verify address and you can see it's gonna give me it's gonna break it into three, but I usually just check the last little bit and you can see it's 397888A, same thing on the screen. 
So we'll click right and we'll click approve. And it says applications already. Now I'm gonna go over to my computer and real quick, we're gonna head over to MetaMask and send over some money just to show that it worked. So let's just send a little bit to see if it works. I'm gonna go right here to one of my MetaMask accounts right here. I'm gonna click send. I'm gonna paste that address and we're just gonna send, let's say 0.01 Ethereum over to that wallet. We'll click next, we'll be okay with that fee right here and we'll click send. Now it shouldn't take very long on the Ethereum blockchain and so we'll go back to these accounts right here. We'll click into it and we will wait and look, you can see it now updated. Only took about 30 seconds for it to show a balance of 0.01 ETH or $20 worth of Ethereum because Ethereum is drastically down today. In fact, I'm filming this on probably the worst day for Ethereum I've ever seen. So we can do that with any ERC20 coin, which there are literally hundreds or probably thousands right now. And you don't need to set up an account for each one of those. For example, if I go back here and I go that I want to, I say that I want to add a token right here. You can see if I select a token that's on the Ethereum blockchain, for example, the Ape coin is on the Ethereum blockchain, like you can see right here. So when I click it and click continue, it's actually going to be the same address. Okay, you can see right there the address for receiving Ape is the actual same address for receiving Ethereum because that's how Ethereum works. We only need one address for all the tokens that are on the Ethereum blockchain. Now we'll show you real quick how to send and then we'll get to the part where we connect this with MetaMask so you know how to do that as well. Sending, very, very easy to do. You can see right here, it's got an option to click send right there. You can paste an Ethereum address for wherever you wanna go. And this is Ethereum based, meaning you can send ApeCoin or anything else. We'll click continue right here. You'll select an amount. Okay, we'll do something like 0.0001 here. It'll give you a tiny dollar amount that's worth something like $2. I usually select the slower option right here. It's possible you can lose the money. Typically though, it works out. Then we'll click continue, continue, and it's going to require your ledger to verify that we're good to send this. Okay, so we'll hop into our ledger. And actually in the meantime, our ledger is turned off, which is good because this is a good time to verify the pin. So we'll enter our pin real quick. This is good so you can kind of see uh, that this can happen. I'll click retry because it said it couldn't find your ledger because my ledger was off at the time. But once again, when I say retry, it's gonna pull up my ledger. It's gonna ask me to review the transaction and you're gonna go through all the details, including the address, the fees, everything. Then you'll click accept and send and your buns will be off. Now let's briefly show you how you can connect this to your MetaMask wallet. Now it's important to note this address or whatever address you currently have in your MetaMask wallet will not work with this. The address has to be created inside of the ledger so you can create an address inside this ledger and then connect this to the MetaMask wallet. And you can think of the MetaMask wallet as kind of like a front end interface for interacting with your ledger, but you can't do this with any addresses currently sitting in your MetaMask wallet. They're already public. Your MetaMask already has those seed phrases and we don't want that. So we'll plug it into our computer just like we always do. And then we're gonna go to our MetaMask wallet up here. And you can see right here, right here, we can click on your profile and you can click connect hardware wallet. It'll take you to a page where you tell it what kind of wallet you wanna to connect to. You'll click continue. And right here, yours will not say paired. I've been testing to make sure it works. So mine does say paired, but you'll click connect right there and it's gonna go find and connect to your ledger. Once it finds your ledger, it's going to look and ask you which wallet you wanna allow MetaMask to have access to. And you'll select typically that first one that you have funds in, but whatever one you want right there, mine's already been selected. So I'll just click cancel and we're all good to go. Now, when I open my MetaMask, I've got my normal MetaMask wallet right here. Okay, and I've got my ledger right here. And I click in there and there's that $10 balance. Now I can go to uniswap.org or SushiSwap or whatever it is that you typically use for these exchanges. And we have a full tutorial on Uniswap if you'd like on this channel, but you'll be able to go and do simple swaps with the Ethereum in your account. So for example, it says you've got Ethereum and you may want this token or some other token. We'll say I want just a tiny amount of that token right there. Now, when you go to click swap, it's going to confirm with this ledger wallet. So MetaMask is gonna pop up just like it always does. In my case, it's gonna say insufficient funds because crazy enough right now, uh, fees are close to $120, which we won't spend on this tutorial. But all you have to do is you'll click confirm and then you're gonna to have to once again, pull up your ledger right here. And it's gonna ask you to go through the transaction just like we just did using the native app. And then you'll double click to select that you want it to go through. And that's how you verify inside of your ledger that you're okay with what's happening on the MetaMask front end. The last thing you need to know is you can only add a few addresses to the Nano S. It's the Nano or the small version. It has very little memory, which means you can probably add about four different addresses. Now, when I say addresses, I mean you can add an ERC20 address and any ERC20 token will work. And then you can add a BNB address and any BNB token will work and a Bitcoin address, but you can only add a few. If you want more, you'll need to upgrade to the higher memory version that Ledger offers, which I don't love, but that's just the way it is. And that's how you go about setting up your Ledger Nano S in a secure way, making sure that no one 
one has access to your crypto unless you verify it. As that quiz said, once you get this done and once you get this set up, your seed phrase and your security phrase is being stored on this Ledger Nano S and it's never given to MetaMask and never given anywhere else and so your funds can be considered as secure as possible assuming you take this seed phrase and you put it somewhere safe. As always, we try to do this with no fluff. If you like crypto without all the fluff and out all the hype and out all the people telling you that things are going to go up to $100,000 in a few days, this is the channel for you. Go ahead and click subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.